we need to test it. One, two, three. Well, good afternoon. This is the Tuckahoe Town Meeting for May 28th, 2020, and I'm Pat O'Bannon, uh, the Tuckahoe Supervisor on the Henrico County Board of Supervisors. Thank you for joining us. We know we have quite a few people already online. As you know, usually we do this in the library, the Tuckahoe Library or the Gaten Library, but uh, with the way things are now, uh, we are presenting this at the uh, in the facilities for the Henrico County um, PR department. I want to thank Victoria Davis for helping us out, and she's going to be taking any questions that you may have. Now, if you look at the right side of your screen, you're coming to us from YouTube. Uh, there is a place there where you can ask questions if you type them in, or if you're watching this and, and you don't see that area on the right side of your screen where you can ask questions, just email me at pob at patobannon.com. That's pob at patobannon.com, and I will check my iPhone occasionally during this time. Now, before we did, we planned this, we sent out some bulletins asking people to send emails in case they had questions, and I have a few, and we will answer them shortly. But first, we have the county registrar with us, Mark Coakley, and he's going to tell us about the upcoming primary election in June. And some of the information he's going to give us also could apply to the November election. So, Mr. Coakley, let's hear from Mr. Coakley. Great. Thank you. Good afternoon. I want to talk about the June 23 2020 primary election we have in Henrico County and in the Tuckahoe Magisterial District. First of all, we do offer absentee voting by mail and we will be open at all the precincts in the county on election day. If you have face masks, we, ask, we encourage you to wear them, but we do not turn any voters away that, have the fa that do not have face masks. We will offer them. You will have hand sanitizers at the precinct. And remember, if you vote by mail, you can always include reason 2A, which is a disability or illness due to the COVID-19. Come November, we do away with uh, the reasons for voting. So it'll be the no excuse absentee voting in November. But for the June 23 primary, we do have to have that reason 2A to vote absentee and we're highly encouraging it. We are open both at the Western office and the Eastern office on Nine Mile Road. To vote this election, you will be given a pen, your own marking device, which you can keep in a privacy folder that the ballot will go in. So we're not touching your ballot. You keep the privacy sleeve in the pen as you leave, but always remember to turn in your ballot into the voting machine. All the precincts are open. We are having five changes in other districts, in Three Chop and in Verina and Fairfield, where we're moving away from assisted living facilities into schools and recreation centers. Those voters will receive a notice next week as to where to vote. But in Tuckahoe, all precincts are open. For the Tuckahoe district, you'll be voting on for the primary election which is a nomination process for the November ballot, the Republican U.S. Senate primary. So all the districts are listed on the screen and a sample ballot of just Republican U.S. primary. And that's all I have, Ms. O'Bannon, but uh, I'd be glad to take any questions if anybody has anything or. Are there any questions from folks online? Okay, so okay. please contact me or the office if you have any questions also after the, the video. And what's the number that, that they can call if they have questions? Sure thing. Our number is area code 804-501-4347. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's very important to vote, obviously. And I know many of our, our viewers are, know that this, how important this is. I do want to mention one thing. Uh, Mr. Coakley said wearing a, a face mask. Uh, today we're sitting six feet apart, but 
whenever if you are looking for a face mask, especially with the the governor's um, discussion on Tuesday about you must wear a face mask when you go into a business. I have driven through Tuckahoe and have found face masks at Pleasant's Hardware, uh, at CVS Pharmacy, at Walgreens, and at other places such as that. So ask. They may have them behind the counter. But if you can't find a mask that you like, uh, certainly you can make one. You can find instructions online, or you can purchase a cotton bandana uh, at various locations such as Dollar General, Family Dollar, or any of the dollar stores. So please be prepared, but uh, know that you're helping others when you put on that bandana or you put on that face mask. Now we have Neil Luther, Direc Director of Recreation and Parks for Henrico County, and he's going to tell us about some exciting things going on to get you outside during the next few months. Thank Mr. You Luther. Thank you very much, Mrs. O'Bannon. Um, I'm glad to be here this afternoon. I just uh, want to highlight a couple things that we've been doing is, is we've obviously had to, like the rest of the world, make, make some adjustments into how we uh, deliver our, our services uh, to the folks of this county. Um, the, the first thing I want to stress is that we are still continuing to, to provide recreation content and programming content. Uh, the first phase of that, we tried to really upsize our presence on the various social media feeds. So on any of these outlets, we're, we're trying to be much more aggressive in, in pushing out content about things to do, things to keep children busy, to, to keep uh, folks active and engaged. And then as a, as a second foray into this, we actually now have spun up what we're calling our virtual class program. You can see the URL there on the screen. But these are truly interactive classes that are done virtually. It's off a WebEx platform, so you pre-register. And we'll lead you through, or staff will lead you through, uh, normal recreation type programs ranging from everything from fitness and, 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 and help, uh, health to uh, crafts and activities. Uh, and then once the class itself is complete, it's um, bookmarked uh, for viewing again at your uh, leisure on, on our YouTube channel. So please uh, check out the, the URL there if, if you have an interest in, in um, signing yourself or your, or your family up for, for any of those kind of, of, of programming content. The other thing we've been doing is um, trying to support our local business community. Uh, we have a lot of parks out there. People have been turning out into the parks uh, in, in great numbers, particularly as the weather has gotten nice and, and people have gotten uh, or wanted to have the ability to get outside. So we, we partnered with, uh, we are partnering with local food vendors, lo local food trucks in Enrico County, and alternating between uh, Dory Park in the East End and Deep Run Park in the West End on weekends and making uh, food trucks available for folks. All these folk, all these food trucks have the ability to call in, pre-order, uh, maintaining the appropriate social distancing. And again, this is a way to put some things into our parks and to help our local um, uh, economy, uh, you know, go through this uh, together. Again, if you have uh, any more specifics about this, we update before each weekend the food vendors that are coming with all the information. You can see the URL there with the calendar. Um, a couple of things that I just want to touch on that we as a department have been doing to pitch in and, and uh, show support. We have a, a lot of creative staff. We have a lot of sewing materials and sewing machines that we use typically in the summer for crafts and whatnot. And so we repurposed those uh, resources immediately and began what we called our face mask initiative. We've uh, to date manufactured over 1,500 uh, face masks. Um, these are obviously the non-surgical variety, but the, the kinds uh, now that we're uh, being told are the appropriate thing to wear at all times. So we've been doing that to support our, our local uh, emergency response effort. Um, we've also been doing a, as staff a lot of things to directly support uh, the county in its emergency response. Those include things like supporting the backpack feeding program that's being run through the school system uh, to directly supporting logistics in the emergency operations center. Uh, just a number of things that we, we're trying to, to help this community um, get, get through this time together. I wanted to highlight within Ms. O'Bannon's district a, a project that she's been very supportive of that goes back uh, several years and again as the weather has turned nice we've certainly seen a, a lot of turnout in the parks. People are anxious to go walking, to spend time outdoors with families and, and uh, this Tuckahoe Creek Park 
is a, a very passive neighborhood focused uh, amenity that was built uh, the first phase of which was built several years ago and we actually have the second phase under construction currently it uh, will uh, connect uh, down in the uh, Lauderdale Road area neighborhoods off of Old Coach Lane and Ridgefield Parkway it's a, again a wonderful neighborhood resource the existing boardwalk is, is heavily used and we're very excited that, that we'll essentially be able to complete a loop so neighbors in that area will be able to enjoy a, a longer evening stroll uh, and the uh, completion of the project should wrap up here midsummer, late July or beginning of, of August. And you can go fishing, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, we do have some uh, places down there where we can fish and, and the uh, floodplain and creek area of Tuckahoe Creek is actually beautiful. Very, You would not know you're in the middle of a suburban urban area when you're when you're down on that boardwalk quite a wonderful place to go for some peace of mind uh, the, the last thing I'll, I'll focus on we're getting this question a lot um, summer camp and summer are, are uh, intrinsically linked and obviously uh, our normal summer camp routine ha has been thrown um, out of whack by the the circumstances but we're not giving up on summer camp entirely uh, we know and, and have made the uh, decision that we can't go forward with what we traditionally do in terms of our, our summer blast program that would normally begin uh, the week after school so that would put it uh, the normal beginning around the 20th of June um, that's not going to happen this year but we are looking at an alternative and working uh, to make some plans to offer potentially offer uh, a variant of our normal camp beginning in July now this is in the, the planning stages but uh, everything we're doing is, is being done um, in conjunction with consultation with the uh, emergency planning folks, the, the guidance from the CDC, and the guidance, of course, that's forthcoming from the state. Uh, in general, um, the camps that we do hope to be able to offer will begin later in the summer, hopefully as we are fully into the phase two uh, portion of this recovery. Uh, they will be smaller in number. Um, but again, our, our commitment is to do everything we can to keep the normal in summer to the extent possible. We had an email from a Gary Fable. Put your, put your face close to the microphone. You fixed it? Okay. Apologize. Make sure they can hear you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> New, this is uh, new technology. Is uh, we're we're a people-oriented uh, department, so I apologize. We're not as quite accustomed to the the virtual world as we should be. Uh, but again, uh, the summer camp is something we are, are, are hard at work and in consultation with a lot of resources to make sure that if we can do this, it's safe. But the message here is that we're not abandoning hope and, and giving up on the, the reality that summer camp is an intrinsic part of summer as we know it, and we want to do everything we can um, to return to some kind of, of normal as, as quickly as we can for, the, for this community and the residents. And uh, we would welcome, uh, during this time, any kind of feedback or thoughts that you have uh, up on the screen. You feel free to contact us at 501-7275 or uh, send any concerns, comments, suggestions, feedback. Uh, we welcome it. We're an interactive department. We want to hear from you. We want to know uh, what it is you need and, and what it is that um, you're, you're concerned about so that we can react accordingly. So uh, please, please let us know. I did have some questions um, for you. Um, uh, is there a way, it, are you still renting or, or reserving the different um, picnic tables and areas in the park? Uh, yes, ma'am. Shelter, uh, we, when we went to uh, uh, phase one, we reopened our outdoor parks, and that would include shelters. Uh, now, the use of those shelters is still governed by the, the gathering restrictions that are in place at the state level. Um, but our picnic shelters and pavilions uh, are open and you are able uh, to reserve those. Our indoor recreation centers are still closed. Um, those will be contingent on um, the, the next phase of the state's reopening and guidance that's uh, appropriate specifically to the indoor facilities. But our outdoor parks, our outdoor amenities are all open uh, for business, again, subject to the principles of, of maintaining appropriate social distancing and following the uh, guidelines that are put forward by the state. Is the dog park open? Yes, ma'am. Both dog parks are open. The uh, dog park at Short Pump and the dog park uh, down at Dory in the East End are, are both open. Again, um, the guidance there is uh, 
maintaining appropriate social distance distancing and being cognizant of the the limitation on limiting group sizes or, or congregating to less than 10. We have a question about the a kayak landing. Is that about Tuckahoe Creek Park? A kayak landing for Tuckahoe Creek Park. The kayak landing is going to be in a future phase as we and, and, and Ms., as Ms. O'Bannon knows the uh, 2016 bond referendum included a substantial amount of money earmarked for future phases. So the, the ability to launch a kayak at Tuckahoe uh, Creek is going to be dependent on having um, off-street parking access, and that will not come um, with this particular neighborhood uh, piece uh, of the implementation. But we are, um, that is the number one priority as we move into the bond-funded project once we, we clear this current phase to provide um, dedicated off-street uh, uh, parking to be able to provide boat access, kayak access to Tuckahoe Creek. And the ultimate goal for Tuckahoe Creek Park is to uh, bring it down to Patterson Avenue, the area of Patterson. Yes, ma'am. And, and it will be uh, a, a really, it, it could go north of there, but right now our goal is to get it to Patterson. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ex exactly right. And that would be the vicinity where we're trying to identify potential locations for parking. Right. So we need parking. <laughs> All right. Um, any other questions? All right. This is great. Thanks, everyone, for paying attention. And I know you want to get out and, and, and play games and do things outside in the parks. Uh, I do want to mention that um, this weekend, Henrico is going to distribute care kits with reusable face coverings and in informational flyers uh, to the homes in the county's western area this Saturday and he to help residents protect themselves during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, um, they do need volunteers. Uh, if you could come to Moody Middle School uh, or at to Quakison Middle School about 8 a.m. On, uh, on Saturday, you could help with the distribution, but really the volunteers are needed to, um, to make up the kits, uh, to put them together and the volunteers, even 10 years and older, are needed to assemble them from 2 to 5 on Thursday, that's today, at 2 o'clock, and Friday, tomorrow, May 29th, at the county's Best Plaza building at 1400 Best Plaza Drive. So water snacks and personal protective equipment will be provided. Um, also, we just talked about going outside and having fun in county parks. But I can also tell you, you've got a lot of people who are reminding us that the farmer's markets in Henrico are now open. Dory Park has one on Saturday from 10 to noon. The Lakeside Farmer's Market is open Wednesdays from 9 to 2 and Saturdays from 9 to noon. And the West End Farmer's Market, which is in Tuckahoe, is on the lawn at Gayton Center, which is Ridgefield Parkway and Gayton Road. And that's this Saturday from 9 to noon. And I know at Lakeside Farmer's Market, they have a, a really good um, a, a guy that brings uh, seafood from uh, down in the Northern Neck. So let's patronize Air County businesses. And that brings us to the fact that Air County businesses are where our jobs come from and where our business taxes come from, which leads us to our next speaker who is Ned Smither, the Director of Finance for Henrico County. And he's got some interesting things to talk to us about uh, that I know you'll be interested in. Mr. Smither. Thank you, Ms. O'Bannon. It's my pleasure to be here with you and, and talk at the town hall meeting. Back when COVID-19 first became newsworthy in, in Henrico, the, the Board of Supervisors and Ms. O'Bannon was trying to figure out what we could do from a tax standpoint to help our citizens, to help our restaurants, and to help the hotels and motels. And what quickly they took action in March to provide you with some, some timing relief on the payment of your taxes. As you know, real estate, personal property, and, and machinery and tools tax are all due on June 5th. But what the, the Board of Supervisors action then taken in March to give you some flexibility on cash flow timing uh, was to eliminate the penalty and interest on those June 5th payments if for some reason that wasn't comfortable for you and, and, and to extend that period to August 5th. And we also did the same thing for our meals tax, our restaurant customers and our, uh, our meals tax customers and our transit occupancy tax for our hotels. They're all doing the 20th of the month. 
And what the Board of Supervisors did in March was to eliminate the penalty and basically make the penalty equal to 0% and keep the same due date. And we're asking the restaurants to continue to report to us on a monthly basis what their sales were, but the payment itself on the, on the meals tax isn't due. It's due by no later than August 20th. So we hope that helps. It's really a cash flow timing thing that the board wanted to do to help our citizens and to help our businesses throughout the county. A second thing we, uh, the board did, and as far as uh, this is administrative action, but as you know, when you pay your bills online, uh, we, we use a company called PayMenace, and PayMenace handles all the credit card payments, whether it's debit, e-checks. They even do our e-bill presentment for you so you can see your bills online and get notifications. But part of that process, when you paid your taxes, you also paid a small fee, a convenience fee, for the, to, for, to pay those taxes. In an effort to keep you safe and keep you in your home and, and, and actually to help our buildings stay less crowded, uh, to remove the lines, the, the, the county has waived those fees for the time being so that you can pay your bills online, utility bills, taxes, all without uh, fees. And we hope that helps uh, as far as the, late, the, the people, that, especially the people that like to pay cash. Uh, we have a pay near me feature where you can take cash. Instead of coming to the county's office from 8 to 4.30, you can take cash to your 7-Eleven, uh, CVS stores, Dollar General stores, excuse me, Family Dollar stores, excuse me. And, 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 you, and those payments can be made off hours. So we hope that's going to help as far as keeping the traffic out of the county administration buildings and trying to keep the citizens safe. So if I can move forward to that uh, to the next payment. The, on this chart, you'll see the phone number. We hope this will help. And this is the contact information that you, the online website where you can find uh, the e bill presentment and the ability to pay your bills online. But most importantly, I think a lot of people will use the 855 number, the phone number that's listed there, as a way of keeping, staying home and staying safe. So that's 855 Yes, ma'am. Okay. If you want to pay cash, if you don't mind, just go to our website. You can print a ticket off, and you see the link here to those tickets. And so if you're paying a utility bill, print off your ticket and go to your 7-Eleven or go to your CVS store or go to your um, Dollar General, simple, Family Dollar. And, and uh, any time any, that they're open, you can make your cash payment. And the limit on that cash payment is $1,000. 7-Eleven can take more than $1,000 in cash, but, and we understand that. But again, it's for your convenience. We weigh those fees. Just a little background on the, on the county's financials. <laughs> Recently, you have seen a lot of uh, the board actions that's trying to deal with the new COVID-19 and, and the impact on the budget for not only the fiscal year 20, but fiscal year 21. And as, as, as you see here on the slide, the, uh, we had a good 2019. Our fund balance was over $281 million, and we had a clean, unmodified opinion. But part of the action now, you know, is how do we manage fund balance? And historically, you'll see fund balance growing here to $281 million. And part of what Ms. O'Bannon and the Board of Supervisors have been wrestling with over the last two months is how will June 30, 2020 look with impacts on revenues, and how, and most importantly, how will fiscal year 21 look? Ms. O'Bannon, I think it, it was early March where you first saw the budget proposal for 2021, and within two weeks we were back in front of you trying to show you changes to that budget. I so. know people, all the different departments work on their budgets for months. And we began our discussion because Air Board of Supervisors meets for an entire week to, to really go over it line by line. And, and the first thing we noticed was with the closures, obviously, our restaurants and all our businesses, we knew that the, the budget we had that had been prepared so carefully by the different uh, department directors, it wasn't going to fly. Right. We just, and, and I believe one of the members of the board said, we just as well check this out the window because we knew we had to start all over again, or you had to start uh, all over again. And, and that, that process is all geared towards managing our fund balance numbers at, at the end of each fiscal year. And because local governments must have a balanced budget, yeah. unlike the federal government. <laughs> That's right. So part of this fund balance is just, you know, as a AAA county, we, we're required to maintain certain healthy cash reserves, and we have that built in. We also have pay-as-you-go funding is for projects that we, we don't borrow money for every project. We use pay-as-you-go for, for lots of projects, and that's also part of this number. It's how we stay healthy as a AAA locality. And that was a question that did come up, um, was about how are we paying for the two new schools? Right. 
And it was because um, much of that payment was with their fund balance. It was. It came from the so we have to be very, million. very careful how this is handled. Part of I mentioned the PAYGO projects that are included in that funding. We also we, we borrow money, and Ms. O'Bannon and the board are continuing looking for us to make sure that we're taking advantage of every interest rate opportunity that comes along, whether it's refundings that are available to us as a county, or just perfect timing as to getting into the market to, to fund uh, bond projects. As you know, in 2016, the, the voters approved a referendum for a variety of projects, and it's our task to, you know, to make sure that we get to those interest rates as as quickly and effectively as we can. And we have guidelines and policies to make sure that we borrow money on a, on a smart basis, and that's one of the reasons why we're AAA rated. We do maintain those policies. And just uh, give you a feel for the impact of interest rates on our, our, on our budget. And, and interest rates now are historically low. One, one of the few good things, and I promise is only one of the few good things that's coming out of COVID-19, is interest rates. You're probably seeing it on your home mortgages. We're seeing it on our cost of money. Uh, a 1% increase, excuse me, a 1% decrease in interest rates today is the same to the county as a 10% reduction in the cost of the project. It just gives you an impact of how important interest rates are. And there's a chance that right now the county would be in the market, you know, if we were borrowing 20 year funding, we would be in the market at one and a half percent. So part of our goal is to make sure we take advantage of these interest rate opportunities for the Board of Supervisors. I know we, we probably would have some questions on this. Um, our, our homeowners in Henrico um, are very interested in this. Um, they, of course, may have some financial concerns themselves, but right. understanding how county um, budgets work um, I think they understand this part of it. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions that anybody has. Well, the, I, I, one more time, um, I will say this. I, I paid my real estate tax by going to the county, and there's a special um, box at the front door of the administration building, and it's like a bank deposit box uh, I pulled it down it's very heavy <laughs> I put my check in the it was in an envelope and I pushed it closed and it took it and so that's one way you could come in but I also came back um, about a week later and stood in line six feet apart there were circles outside and um, and waited and paid my car tax fantastic so you can pay it in person and it is safe um, they did have a lady there who was, was a business owner who had some questions, and she came in and spoke to a computer screen because the employee that she needed to talk to was, um, was, some, remote. was remote from that location. And so they, they got that uh, a nice lady to talk to her about her concern as a business owner. But so we are able to take person-to-person -person contact, whether it's through video contact or directly with the cashiers. We've got safe six-foot queuing lines to make sure you're protected. <clears throat> but it's, we, we think that uh, the lines might be minimized this year because of the online payments. We hope so. And, uh, right. But we're glad to have you if you come out to the county. I try to do things that we ask other people to do right. <laughs> to make sure it's, it's easy and it's convenient. Um, thank you very much. I didn't have any questions about finances, but I did have one about the farmer's markets that I mentioned. Uh, again, Dory Park, Saturdays, 10 to, to noon, Lakeside Farmers Market, Wednesdays and Saturdays at 9, and the West End Farmers Market at Gayton Center. That's at Ridgefield Parkway and Gayton Road, and they're Saturday from 9 to noon. And the question is, uh, is there somewhere we can publicize this? And I will find that out. I'm not certain where we would put it, but we can certainly work on doing that, and that's why Victoria Davis is here. <laughs> We'll, I will work with her to get this publicized. I did have some questions that I received um, before the town meeting started. One was about libraries, and I feel certain there are those who are watching, they're interested in that. As of this week, starting last Tuesday, curbside pickup of holds, books that you've asked them to hold for you, they're now available at the Tuckahoe Area Library and other area libraries, and you know there's one in each magisterial district. Uh, you may need a new digital card to access some of the things you want. 
So um, check the library website, and that is henricolibrary.org. Um, this year, summer reading will be one Henrico reading challenge. They're going to do it again. It offers fun book-based learning activities each week for participants to engage with library resources and earn digital badges and prizes. The program primarily will take place online, and they're going to announce those details on June 15th. Starting next week, that's Tuesday, June 2nd, book returns will be accepted as part of the curbside service at the five area libraries that include, that in course includes Tuckahoe. So again, if you have any questions, henricolibrary.org. Uh, we'll post that also afterwards. I did have several questions about Regency. People, I think, are interested in being sure that comes about, and they're very excited about it. Uh, the Valvoline Instant Oil Change uh, building along Quackison Road, they're working on that now. And demolition will begin some t very soon, any day, to uh, take down the, the former Sears building in order to work on the Phase One Regency residential development project. So maybe if you sit in your car across the street, you can watch them demolish the old Sears. <laughs> the Nova Aquatics um, facility is continuing interior work. Uh, and there will be an upper plaza renovation, which is on the north side of the building that faces Quackison, close to J.C. Penney. Uh, and it'll be an outward courtyard with restaurants and outdoor rooftop dining. And they've started on that, too. So for a little excitement, again, you could watch some of this happening. Now we already have Chipotle, Panera, Better Med, First Watch, and soon to come will be Surge Trampoline. It's under construction. And of course, the Nova Aquatics a little later and that upper plaza renovation. I know everyone's interested in what's happening at Regency. Um, and those are the questions I received. And ha do we have any more, Victoria? No more questions. And I will check one more time. Well, I have someone who's asked me for my thoughts about school starting before or after Labor Day. What I will say is um, I went to school year-round when I was in high school, and personally, I'm surprised they, they decided not to do that. Um, it would give parents an opportunity to have a winter vacation because you would go for quarters. But with that said, it's not my decision. It's the school board's decision. So... Thank you very much for your time and attention with us. We were pretty quick today, but I know if you, if you have a few minutes, pass on this site. Remember, we're on YouTube. Also on YouTube, if you check Henrico County Government, you'll find other very informative and very useful videos. Uh, some are biographies of Henrico notables. Why did they name the school after that particular person? You can look that up on Henrico's YouTube channel. Also on Henrico's YouTube channel, you'll find things that are, are how to decontaminate for COVID-19. COVID so very interesting materials right there at your fingertips. And if you're watching us online on the YouTube channel, you can find that too. So thank you very much for listening in and watching us. And thank you for your questions. Victoria, how many people do we have who were watching? How many? 33. 33 people. Wonderful. Thank you very much for your time. And have a great day. And check out your glasses. <laughs> and your face cover. Thank you very much.